The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, this is um, Frank Sauber from Sigfox. Welcome to today's webinar together with the Sensor Hive and uh, Weissel. Give us a couple of minutes uh, before we start uh, and give you an overview about um, uh, temperature controlling using Sigfox. So we start approximately in two to three minutes. Okay, it's three minutes past nine. So welcome everybody to our webinar today using IoT for efficient temperature monitoring in the food industry. Next slide, please. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, Kasper Halef, um, the CEO of SensorHive, uh, who will give uh, an overview on the efficient temperature monitoring solution uh, from SensorHive. I also welcome um, Brown Lee, from Korea, from our uh, partner at Wysol. Uh, he will give uh, an update on uh, cost efficient modules, um, as basis for global solution. Those modules are used in the Center Hive um, solution. My Sam, I'm Frank Sauber. I would like to start with a short overview for those which are new to Sigfox about what is Sigfox and what is news about Sigfox. Sigfox was uh, founded. 2010 in uh, Toulouse, France, as a uh, network operator for um, internet. The focus is offering a low-cost solution, a reliable solution, a global solution as a network service provider. Next slide, please. Which is made for the Internet of Things, transmitting very small data packages 12 bytes is one message, and you will see uh, from Casper and Brown what is the advantage of those messages, small messages in a network which has been suited and built only for the purpose of uh, connecting um, things. Um, Sigfox is operating the whole network, putting antennas in the landscape, managing this was a uh, service level agreement and having a cloud which then souped up. So you will see then in the solution from um, from Casper, from Sensor Hive, how you use that network. Next slide, please. In the last 10 years, Sigfox has developed quite significantly. Um, starting in France 10 years ago, now we are operating in 60 countries in the globe. This means on the top right side, we are covering approximately 1 billion people in these 60 countries. Out of the 60 countries on the, on the bottom left, you see 21 countries, a third of the 60s we are considered as nationwide covered. It's a good range of customers from Europe up to um, Asia or Americas. Next slide, please. We want to continue that journey, which you just seen in slide before. 
reaching 60. The goal for this year is to reach 70s. There is some significant one when you see on the right side, which is on our target list to close, which is India, China and Russia. The dark blue on the right side is representing the uh, the covered or countries which are in the rollout right now. Um, you see a relatively good uh, penetration in European and then Americas and also an increasing coverage in the Southeast Asian region. Again, 60, that's the dark blue on the right side is today, 70 is the target for the end of the year. Um, this is a terrestrial coverage, but we also are going to the sky. We will launch a satellite program in a test phase this year and commercially as a target in the year 2021 to also cover areas like desert and, uh, and oceans, etc. And we also have launched a flexible solution called the micro base station, which is a, a gateway like flexibility, which is available 2000, since 2019, beginning of this year. Next slide, please. This is the uh, Exostation Micro. It's a small device which is a little bit similar to your Wi-Fi router, which um, is available through our 60 Sigfox operators on the globe and gives you the possibility to flexible add uh, and extend the network. Next slide, please. And this is the idea of Sigfox not only covering on the left side, um, the regions with terrestrial areas, but also move into a customer deployed scenario with the goal to cover the planet, um, very flexible, uh, terrestrial as well as uh, satellite covering. That in a very short nutshell, I want to give you an overview on Sigfox. Um, before I hand it over to Casper uh, for giving overview on Sensor Hive, I think we have, and I would like to get your attention to a first uh, poll question, which we like to raise. And I ask Hugo to support us here. The first question where it would be great if you give us some feedback is, did you consider already and implement an IoT solution? And in what stage of the process you are as a company right now? Are you in the innovation department? We already have a first pilot project running. Is it already above and with the management commitment to do it? Uh, or are you using it already? Um, if, you, if you give us your feedback, it would be great. Um, I give you 30 seconds around. Um, So I think we are coming to the end. So thank you for your contribution. And um, I would take um, interesting. So yeah, thank you, Hugo, for that. So the majority is in a pilot project running phase. Um, some are using uh, solution implemented. Thank you for that feedback. And I uh, would like to hand over to Casper to give you an overview on Sensor Hive and your solution temperature monitoring. Cool. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, can I get back to... Maybe I just can't see my slides yet. Oh, you cannot. No. Just okay. see the poll question. Yes. Uh, cool. This, yeah, then I have my slides again. Cool. So thank you for, uh, for letting me be a part of this. Uh, I'm here to introduce you to Centrive. I'm one of the, first of all, my name is Casper. I'm one of the co-founders uh, and CEO in Centrive. Uh, next slide. 
I'm educated as an engineer together with my three co-founders, and we have like a broad set of uh, one in hardware, one in software, me in product development. So we had the competences within the team to actually develop the product. We started in 2014 developing sensors, and then approximately uh, two years later, we we launched uh, the first sensors together with Sigfox. And at the same time, we uh, launched a partnership with our, one of our biggest partners, Eve Miley, in the food business. Uh, next slide. So this is a, a, a constellation of uh, like a big uh, software company within the food sector, uh, having more than 10,000 clients uh, in this space. And then us as a uh, more like a technology center uh, area of the business. Uh, and together we run some of the leading uh, companies within the food sector, uh, such as McDonald's, 7-Eleven, uh, Surrey K, Sodexo, ISS, uh, yeah, Seven, yeah, Compass, maybe you know Core or Fatso Group, uh, which all uses uh, like uh, the software and sensor platform. Um, next slide. So uh, this uh, software, oh, platform consists of several different uh, services around the food sector and the general purpose of this is to help uh, food companies in making the documentation uh, they need in order to for when the food authorities do check uh, their uh, documentation which can be a quite complex uh, uh, stuff for them uh, and rules are changing so having this uh, uh, like consultancy uh, uh, help together with like in, in, embedded into a software platform uh, that they just get their daily task list of what they have to do is uh, like a significant improvement of their uh, daily work. And one of the big improvements uh, we, we have done together with eSmiley is to automate uh, the temperature doc documentation uh, with the wireless sensors. Uh, around 50% of all uh, documentation for the food companies is temperature documentation. So it's really a huge task for them. Uh, and I mean, they care about making good food. Uh, and this is just like a borrowing task they have to do on a daily basis, checking temperature. So before we did the partnership with e, with e Smiley, next slide. Then, uh, yeah, okay, this is just some examples on some of the clients they have. They can be like in different um, areas of the food industry. So it can be restaurants, cantinas, hotels, uh, food trucks, supermarkets, gas stations. So like a variety of different types of food companies. Next slide. So this is uh, what eSmiley developed uh, a few years ago where they made everything changing from being uh, like books on the shelf where they write on, on pen and paper uh, like every day for their documentation. Uh, then they made like an electronic version but they still had to do a lot of the temperature documentation manually, which means that they went with the iPad, visit their like uh, refrigerator one, refrigerator two, freezer two, freezer four, uh, cooling down food, heating up food again, making all this documentation electronic, but still manually. So what we did with eSmiley was to automate this process, embedding wireless sensors uh, for all the temperature documentation. Next slide. And this is uh, how, like, it's also seen from uh, like the uh, the standard perspective. How like we are like uh, creating value. So it's not just about temperature documentation or temperature measurements. It's about connecting in uh, like raw temperature data, intelligent together with the with the control points. So all over the world, there is um, the standards about how to document things. We have uh, uh, like some EU standards here. Uh, when, and then there is like some national guidelines. For example, in Denmark, we have some uh, uh, differences, for example, compared to Norway or Germany. But I mean, they are in general under the same umbrella of, of standards. And based on this, uh, uh, the, the food companies, it could be a restaurant, has to do like a hazard analysis or control, critical control point analysis, um, where they uh, stay saying, okay, this, or making like, it, identifying the critical points where they could have challenges and then they need to make a procedure of how to control these uh, critical spots in their production or their kitchen. Uh, and based on this, like a bunch of uh, control points are, are made and a procedure of how often do they have to check this. 
And what we do is that we take then the raw data and then connect it with the uh, control point. So it's not just a temperature sensor, it's actually a temperature sensor that is connected together with the specific refrigerator and we know exactly what there is in that refrigerator. So we know that they uh, keep up with the good standards and procedures. And in case we identify any challenges, then we cast a manual task for them, making sure that we control that, okay, we are sure that this is good or not good. And in case everything is within standard, then the task is just automated uh, and uh, disappear, uh, disappear from their system. So they only uh, make the task they need to do and everything else is automated for them. Next slide. So this is like a, okay, this is maybe not the best example, but this was to give you like a variety of what, what they could see that they have like a lot of green uh, uh, area or green point, control point which is where everything is okay. Then they might have a few where, okay, maybe we have seen a slight decrease, maybe yesterday or a few hours ago, you have to maybe uh, go and look at it. And then we might have one or two critical spots saying, okay, you had a problem uh, yesterday, it might be, a refrigerator where they uh, had they, they were maybe putting in new food in the refrigerator and they could see okay it was yesterday and they had an incident and then they can make a, a documentation stating okay this was the, the act we did next slide uh, and this is how they see it so it's not just like uh, like a uh, like a upper and lower limit but we actually have like certain limits as you saw, bef saw before with the yellow uh, uh, point control points so we can actually alert before something is critical. Uh, here they can also set their measurement interval which is dependent on the type of food and the type of uh, control point they have. Next slide. And yeah then in the end uh, I mean now I've been talking a lot about the sensor and data and standard but then in the end it also comes down to the people in our business the people that we are actually helping. So here is like one of the chefs where, I mean, the goal for him is actually just to sleep well in the night, making sure that they have sensors in, in the refrigerator and just in case there's something wrong, then he, he knows that, okay, uh, I can handle uh, on that, uh, I'll act on that. Um, so uh, of course he saves some time in, in, the, in, the, in the monitoring, documentation service, uh, uh, having this uh, like real-time overview, but in the night it's also about um, uh, making sure that he is like lowering the risk, and in, in case of something, then he knows that is uh, that uh, of being aware of that. Uh, next slide. And I mean, this was to give you an overview. So we are not just this uh, uh, sensor business, but we have actually opened up our both sensors and software for other applications. So it could be APIs like this eSmiley application. We have recently launched our own uh, like software platform on top of our devices aimed for the uh, construction industry where we also using the same uh, experience as uh, in the food sector. So it's about intelligent temperature monitoring. It's about uh, reporting alarms, notifications. So many of the same uh, features that we developed for the food industry is reused again in the construction sector where we help construction uh, clients um, optimizing the like the uh, curing process of concrete. Uh, and just recently we have like launched some big uh, clients like Heidelberg Cement uh, in Germany. And in two weeks from now, we're gonna make a big uh, launch of the product at the world biggest uh, construction fair in Bauma in Munich. Um, so that's gonna be a, a very, good experience for us and uh, yeah, we hope to, to gain a lot from that. Uh, next. So thank you, Casper, um, for this uh, interesting summary. Um, so um, I think the interesting stuff when you are highlighting the construction industry and with concrete and the food industry, um, living here in Munich, uh, with our office very close to Bauma, seeing the cranes in the sky. Uh, looking forward for that. Uh, before we come to the next poll question, I almost forgot that you have the possibility to raise your own questions to us in the chat. Please use that. Uh, at the end of the session, we will go back to you and 
try to answer all the questions you raised. So please use the question in the in the GoToWebinar, uh, which then uh, Brown and Casper and myself are ready to answer. Um, so thank you, Casper, for this uh, overview on your solution in the food and construction industry. Um, it would be great if you get uh, if you can get some more feedback from you about uh, what is your opinion and most important requirements for an IoT solution. Um, there's always a trade-off: cost of solution, a better lifetime, global solution, control of the whole solution, including the coverage and the data integrity. So it would be great if you can give us uh, your feedback, which uh, helps all of us uh, to optimize our offering. Okay, I think, um, yeah, I think we can uh, close the poll question. So thank you for your contribution. Very appreciated. So cost of solution uh, and the control of the whole solution is the most important topics. Um, I'm sure there will be some questions then uh, at the end of the session where we can talk about especially uh, both of these uh, elements uh, and the global solution. Um, yeah, thank you, Casper and um, Brown. A well, big uh, greetings to Korea, and um, we are all happy listening to um, Weissel's offering used in the Sensor Hive uh, solution. Okay, hello, hello everyone. This is Brown Lee, in charge of sales manager at Weissel. We are based in Korea, but we are the selling provide our single box module to global customers. Even we are manufacturers of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and the other connectivities. These days, we are strongly invest our resources and money to the Singapore module manufacturing because the Singapore will be the key solution for the IoT in the world. So I wanted to explain why the Singapore is good for the IoT device. The next page, please. Yeah, you know, the actual is the, in the IoT device, they require the three key requirements. One is for the low power consumption with the batteries. Second is the low cost. Third is low complexity. The device must be simple. So I think these three requirements, the single box is need can satisfy all those three kinds of requirements. So I want to explain each by each. Yeah, next, please. You know, the, in the coverage, the, there are many connectivities like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, LTE, the LoRa, and the other things. But among the, this solution, the Singapore is a covered longest in the world. That means you can transmit your data to the long, longest, longest distance without any the other, uh, how can I say, the repeater or the other things. So Singapore is very good for the coverage. And next, please. And then the data rate, the aspect, the Singapore has the, some the small the data transmitting, so then means, because the data is small, then means the require very low power consumptions. So for example, the, the other connectivities like in the left side, the BLA or Bluetooth GBs, they require the high speed and uh, the, the high speed and short ranges. So this is not good for the IoT device. And the other side, in the upper layers, the 5G or LTE, the 3G, so require the high data rate, but if the range and complexity is very complicated. 
So it is not good for the IoT device. So I think the Sigfox will do better than the others for the complexities. And next, please. So this is a summary between the all connectivities. You know, the compare with other LPWA solutions like LoRa or MB or LTE, Sigfox is most low the power consumptions and low complexities. So th this is the, among the, these solutions, the Sigfox will be best for the, your IoT device with the batteries and the long life. So this is the key factors why the Sigfox is good for the, your IoT device. And next, please. So our partner, the sensor hive, they selected our modules. So inside of their device, maybe you can see our modules. So let me explain about our module lineups. Next, please. You know, that actually, think folks, as of today, there is five frequency zones. We said RC one, two, three, four, five. As you know, the one is for Europe and the Middle East and South Africa. RC2 is US, Brazil, Mexico. RC3 is for Japan. Four is Asia areas and some of South Africa. RC5 is Korea. So those five frequencies can cover all the global countries. So why so we have all lineup to support those five zones. Next, please. Yeah, the one of our module lineup, we say the Sigfox only modules. So we has the five zones and we already certified. So you can use our module inside of your device and the key Key point is that if you see the back side of the module, the soldering area is the same, has the same compactor. So that means all five zone module is pin to pin. So if you have device, just one design, you can easily replace our module and can support every countries. This is very good for the, your device design. And next, please. This is another module lineup. You know that in the previous the page, the product is only for Sigfox. But this, this product, we, menu, we design with the Sigfox, Wi-Fi, GPS, PLE together inside of the one module. So we think that this is good for the, your the kind of a tracker device because in outside you can use the GPS and then inside the indoor, you can use the Wi-Fi or BLE to get the positioning. So this is very good for the, your tracking device. We have a full lineup for all five zones and all we already got certified. And in the back side, all the module has the same pin, uh, pin to pin. So it is the same so you can easily replace to the, the other zones. So this is good for the, your device to ex export your device to the global countries. And next, please. So this is the, our new lineup. The single folks, they have the Monarch. It's kind of a roaming modules. That means the one module support five zones. So we are now designing these modules. So the sample will be available in the next month, in the April, and the mass product will be available in Q2. So you can design with this module, only one module can support global countries. So it is better for your device. With one design can export to the any countries. And next, please. So as of today, we are manufacturing our module and we, in the Sigfox, 
more than 500 companies, they select our module and is now under developing. And some of customers already start mass products. Yeah, one of our key partners is Sensor Hive. They already start mass product with our, using our module. So I can say if you need to evaluate or file a project with Sigfox, you can easily select our module to design the your IoT device. And next, please. Yeah, so if you have any, so if you need a module, maybe you can contact our distributors to get samples or any price information. Yeah. This is the last one. Thank you, Brown. Um, before we coming uh, to our question answers, I would like to have um, last attention for last poll question. And also um, looking at the chat and the questions, please be, don't be shy. Uh, give us your questions. So we are happy to, to answer them uh, before starting the Q&A. Um, what additional information? you would need this would be interesting for all of us do uh, you need additional partners to get solution information about coverage um, use case calculation um, like Casper uh, has presented today availability of devices or cost of solutions um, it would be great if you give us your final feedback Parallel, I'm looking to uh, the questions. Okay, so thank you for that. So let's look at the outcome cost of solution and partners use case calculation. Um, I think that leads me to the first questions, um, which um, I think I would like to raise to, to Casper about cost of solutions. Uh, um, can you talk about um, that a little bit? How much does it cost um, um, in using life um, and what does it bring? I mean, maybe it's a, probably a cost and a, and a business question in combination. Uh, Yes, so I think we, I mean, in general, we try to take a lot of responsibility when we are implementing our solution because, I mean, we are not talking, when with the, we are speaking with the food companies, we are not talking a lot about Sigfox, we are just talking about what the data can bring and like solving their need and also taking the responsibility of if something is wrong, then we will help them getting data in, in case there's a problem with connectivity, install like micro base station or repeaters or anything around that. So, I mean, we, we are based on a subscription model where they have a like, very low cost of like configuration in case we are doing it on site. And then they pay a monthly subscription uh, on each individual sensors, including like the whole uh, software, connectivity, everything. Um, so it's like a combined, uh, like, yeah, turnkey solution that's called that, uh, where they pay. Uh, Pay, pay a fixed monthly subscription and uh, and then low cost from the beginning, uh, so no big investments. I don't know if that <laughs> is an answer to the question. Um, Thank you, Casper. Um, another question, because we talked about uh, internationally quite a bit, especially in Brown's presentation. Um, I think question also to you, Casper, is about international solution in terms of availability. So where, how can can people of interest reach you at Sensor Hive? And second is uh, how international is solution? We talked about different radio zones here. I think it would be interesting for the audience uh, how much of the Weisel models you use for different regions. Yes, so I think we we're actually one of the first uh, who uh, who who was uh, implementing the Weisel modules back in uh, November uh, 2016. And we, like right from the beginning, we made our solution available for uh, RC1, RC2, and uh, RC4 radio zone. And I mean, it has been extremely uh, 
uh, easy way for us to to go global. So I mean, even though that we are still a startup, we have sensors in more than forty countries, and that is, uh, I mean, one of the key uh, ways to do that. That was using the Weisel uh, modules. So only having to replace one single component, and of course, like make an uh, antenna, other antenna tuning, but that was more or less. Uh, the uh, the the big task of course. and then of course like like the uh, Sigfox uh, certification but I mean that was more like a formality when you're using this when you have one um, device approved already using Bison modules then it's uh, then it's relatively easy easy to to get the Sigfox uh, certification as well um, so yeah that has been very very effective for us uh, in terms of scaling our solution. Uh, uh, internationally, and then also uh, Brown Lee talked about, for example, the uh, the uh, the trans transportation and and locking around that, and that has also like a huge huge market potential for us, that like enabling us to go uh, across uh, radio zones, uh, and there is like also like a lot of standards just here in Europe. We have the ESEN uh, twelve eight hundred and thirty, I think it's called. Where you have, for example, if you are doing transport uh, below uh, 24 hours, you have to uh, document every uh, record every five minute temperature. If you go, let's say, 24 hours and seven days, it's 15 minutes. So there's different rules uh, that you have to comply with. And then combining that, if you are transporting across uh, zones, that's uh, a, a huge potential in our case, going even more global. Okay, so I think it's um, uh, thank you for your feedback on the uh, global availability and the cost savings. Uh, another topic was about costs and uh, and battery lifetime. Uh, 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 Brown, can you highlight why is this the battery lifetime is so so low by your using your your modules? Um, maybe you start with that and I have another question following that by Casper about uh, I assume you you guarantee a certain uh, lifetime uh, or number of messages or whatever you guarantee with your device so maybe we start with Brown and Casper uh, you can then jump in in terms of your solution Brown uh, can you highlight a little bit that, that, that uh, your statement about the low battery consumption Yes, so when when we compare the Sigfox module and the other modules, the Sigfox has the very simplicities. And the inside of, of modules, we are designing with the very the low power consumption uh, chipset, chipsets. So when we test it, when you transmit the data, the power consumption is very smaller than the other the comparative the wireless solutions. So when we calculate, maybe some of the device can prolong, can arrive more than seven or eight years. So you cannot image it with the other connectivities. So the Sigfox is very good for the power consumptions. Yep, thank you. Casper, what is the advantage for you to use it then? Yes, I mean, I mean, just by using standard batteries, maybe in the lifetime, um, yeah, eight to ten years, uh, we can actually like live extremely long. And then, uh, then we try to help the, the companies in order to achieve that to optimize the like the transmission interval, the measurement interval. That is not the same in our case. So I mean, you can, I mean, for example, with the recording, we can do more recordings and then maybe transmit just uh, like in the time that we need according to the standard. So you might measure, for example, every 10 minutes, or then maybe only transmit every 30 minutes. So this is like one of the ways we try to optimize our uh, battery consumption. Uh, of course, the battery consumption now, when we're talking about food and temperature monitoring, many of the devices might be uh, used in like low temperatures at minus 30 degrees, minus 35 degrees. Uh, maybe pl plus five degrees. A lot of devices is also in the refrigerators, and that will of course uh, like change the properties of the batteries. So I mean, we maybe in general advise around maybe thirty to forty thousand number of transmission, but it also depends on which radio, radio zone you're in. There is like slightly differences from RC one to RC two to RC four. If you talk about thirty thousand messages, 
by your experience, what is that roughly uh, in terms of years? Uh, so that might be like three, four, five years in like active active use uh, okay. in that in that range. Okay, um, I like to take one question, which came about coverage in the uh, um, uh, um, you covering your own destiny. I think I tried to highlight at the very beginning uh, that Sigfox is not only extending the coverage by the terrestrial coverage, but also um, adding more coverage to really remote areas, uh, uh, starting our satellite program and having your own flexibility with the micro base station, which is something you can um, deploy pretty much by yourself. Um, so give flexibility on the, sh on the short range, having our general um, coverage plus having the uh, coverage by, by the satellite. So this is uh, the journey Sigfox uh, has announced uh, during the last year um, with several programs to give increasing uh, flexibility besides the trend of the coverage uh, which we which I showed on the slides before. I think that's also maybe to add a comment also very important as a solution provider that at least we have an option to pay and make the coverage right for example if you were using TSM and there was no coverage then it was more or less impossible to make the coverage here you can like purchase now the with the launch of the micro base station uh, purchase that and then create it and like pay without like having to uh, and still make the implementation that has been like an extremely important for us to have this combined or hybrid technology no, thank you Casper for underlining that um, I think I have a final question which came up here it's about integration of your sensor hive solution into existing platforms can you talk yes. about uh, that yes so I mean we have uh, we, we, we only want to be like a value adding service in the, in the value chain. So we have said, okay, let's uh, enabling our sensors in like for all type of partners. So they can either be integrated, for example, directly from the, from the Sigfox backend where they put on their own subscription and use it in their own software. They can also, we have our own API which uh, interpretate and help using the raw data from the devices. Uh, and then we of course have some like uh, like our own software applications on top. So there is different uh, options uh, depending on which type of uh, company uh, uh, you are, if that makes sense. Okay, perfect. I have a look at the question. I think we covered all of them. So then remains me to thank uh, Brown and Casper for. Um, for joining the call today. Thank you for Hugo is uh, helping us on the logistics setup. Uh, for those which like the webinar and want to see us again, today, five o'clock uh, European time, we come again, uh, mainly to covering the, the American region. Uh, thank you in advance, Brown, for getting up late in the night uh, for tonight. So thank you for um, watching today and um, like to close the webinar um, for today. Thank you. Bye-bye, thank you. Bye.